I'm talking about this, I know we're not just women here, and with an introduction like this, it sounds like I'm here just to empower or talk about women. That's not the case, and hopefully by the end of my submissions, you will understand why. I want to start off by talking about how exactly the message of empowerment has been somewhat of a disadvantage to empowering women. I think this stems from the message of feminism, which taught people to look at themselves as individuals. It stems from a way of life that's really Western, and it's somewhat alien to the way that we as Africans operate. And I think it stems somewhat from our inability to blend what we find on the outside with our cultural context. I'm talking to me about two groups of women, two types of women that are easily ignored. Um, I'm talking about the university level women who my organization is very passionate about reaching out to. I'm also talking about the young professional women. Um, it's easy to ignore women in these two classes, particularly because they are where many, many people have not yet to reach. So many of the empowerment initiatives go to women who are on the street, for instance. A lot of it goes to people who may not have had access to education, and that's important. They need to be reached out to as well. But how do you develop leadership? female leaders who will take this continent to the next level. I want to tell you the story of a young woman who goes to a very wonderful university called Ashesi University. She started her first year, she was, you know, what the, what I call the, the, the African Female National Anthem. Oh, I'm shy. <laughs> How many of you have thought that before? Oh yeah, I admit it. <laughs> I'm sorry, she was very timid, very, very timid. Uh, could not approach her peers, was not talking in class, didn't really, you know, expand, you know. And um, she and our campus organization at the time called the Women of Ashesi, which I co-founded along with some other wonderful women there, uh, we decided that we wanted to do something about that. But we found that the message of empowerment at the time was not enough. Which just said, oh, anything a woman can do, a man can do. How does that help you? Oh, you know, women have been put down for so long. What does that do? It's not actionable. We found three main reasons or three main areas where we need to focus on. One, confidence building. Because really, all that shyness or inability to deal at a level that is, is characteristic of leadership, it's a matter of confidence. We have the question of how do we give women the skills that they need? Because really, what her shyness hinted to was the fact that she needed to develop her speaking skills. She she developed her confidence and built the communication skills, she did not have a problem speaking up in class, which in many university campuses is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. I'm still wondering why that's important. It's important because these voices are missing. It's missing in the political discourse in this country and on our continent. The voices of women like this young woman, young woman are missing. And there are immense contributions that they can make are yet to be realized because of these little things that I think we can solve. So going back to the story of this young woman, what did we do together? Well, here's what we did. We began to meet regularly. We began to help each other. We found books on speaking. We found articles on public speaking. We decided to read and learn together. We met as groups. Each group was responsible for the other. And this may not seem like a big deal, but it's a big deal when women come together and do something as one. Particularly because we've been fed with a message that teaches us that we are our own enemies. I'm very, very proud to see that today, this young woman is the class speaker for the graduating class. I think she deserves a round of applause. This is one power 
wonderful example out of many of how when you focus on building confidence, enhancing people with skills, and building relationships, that we can reframe and redefine this message of empowerment. So why is it important? It's important to me, particularly because I, like any African woman, am growing up in a time where we have the traditional running aside the modern. We have the traditional concept of you have to be able to cook, you have to be able to clean, you have to be malleable. Running alongside this modern notion of you have to be a career person, you have to be focused, you have to climb the corporate ladder, you have to do this and that. And the idea that it is impossible to do both is prevalent. And I think that we need to start making this a more mainstream discussion. For instance, with the growing number of us who are graduating from university, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. But that's bringing about its own social problems. 60 to 70 percent of the women that you find on TV of, you know, highly successful women, they're either divorced, or they're single, or, you know, have had big breakups. For me, that's a problem, because the model that's being said to us is okay. If you succeed, you will fail in your relationships. You will fail in your marriage. You can't have, you can't have it all. And you need to differ. I think that if we do have programs that focus on these three key areas, we can make a difference. And it's important for women and it is important for men because the dialogue needs to change. We need to start having conversations also with men. The feminist message was very, very individualistic. We were taught to see men as our enemies or as the problem. And we need some nice meetings where, you know, meetings where we gather around and say, hey, you know, the guys, you know, these guys, they were just bringing us down. They were, they were doing this or they were doing that. I hope that our discourse will change. So that we'll start looking at ways to, to collaborate. You know, that the most successful women, in many cases, have had strong father figures, have had strong relationships with men. Because I think there is a relationship, there is a role that men also play in empowering women. I think we're ignoring that. So how do we address this problem? I think, one, it starts with dialogue. I think we need to build a movement of change around this type of dialogue. We need to be able to sit comfortably and as men and women talk about these new problems, like the poor woman who is traveling around daily, who is moving from one place to another, who's high achieving, and the man who is not that way, but still expects the woman to cook and clean and do the things that he was traditionally brought up to believe that he should do. We need to start challenging ourselves on the basis on which we hold these things dear. I strongly believe that if we, as women, are truly empowered, that every area of our lives should show it. I personally believe that it is possible for us to change the discourse and proving what the example that I gave about the woman who met with other women and collaborated and was able to improve one aspect of her life. I think it is possible for men and women to collaborate and begin to talk very seriously about these new challenges. If we don't, the consequences will be dire. Our African, our African societies are dependent on us beginning to think about these things in a way that will cause us to change. Wouldn't it be amazing wouldn't it be amazing, I say, if men and women could stop seeing gender as a divide? You know, we always talk about the of the sexes. And start looking at this as partnership. I recognize that what I'm proposing and what I'm trying to achieve with the Leading Ladies Network is not for everyone. I think that many of us as women who 
are okay with the idea that men are the cause of all of our problems. And I'm not saying that you guys don't give grief, because I think you do in some ways. It's not for everybody, because empowerment is a change process. And change is not always comfortable. The process of change often means that you have to come face to face with things that are imperfect about yourself. The process of change requires that you are willing to engage on a level that sometimes can make you very uncomfortable. Having the confidence to have certain conversations means that you have sometimes have very difficult conversations. Like, for instance, many career women are finding the challenge of how to blend their work and their family life. They're so unhappy. And many women, they're, they're full of fear even to succeed because the example that has been set before them is that if they succeed, they will lose their relationships, they will become blinded. I remember when we were on campus, the worst thing anybody could call you was a feminist. And this is the female reaction to that. Oh, no, 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 I'm not a feminist. <laughs> no, 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 because feminism meant you were very, you know, you were overly aggressive. We thought you were very rude. We thought you were very, you know, you stopped on other people to get what you want. So that's why we need to redefine this message of empowerment. Because empowerment needs to happen on both sides. Men need empowerment, too. Men need to have the confidence to give room to women to express themselves. Women need to have the confidence and the sensitivity also to grow themselves in, in, in a way that does not trample the ego or pride of others. I think that we have a lot of work to do, but none of that work can be done if we don't start talking about these things. I'm hoping to start a revolution of sorts through conversations that matter. I do not have all the answers, and I don't think my network of women coming together with men as well will have all the answers. But if we start asking the right questions, I hope that we will find them individually. I welcome you on this journey, and I know that the destination we will get to will be a better one than where we are now. Thank you.